Which scene made Imelda Staunton feel depressed for a couple of days? <laughs> how on earth did Jason Isaacs make Tom Felton cry on set? And just how daring was Ivana Lynch behind the scenes? What is going on? <laughs> These and many more on-set secrets about the Harry Potter supporting cast are coming up. Do you guys hate Dolores Umbridge? No need to answer that. Despite the fact that Imelda Staunton is nothing like Umbridge in real life, she actually enjoyed playing the most hated character in the Harry Potter world. She loved doing every single scene in the movie. Except for one. The most difficult scene to do, which did leave me feeling pretty bad for a couple of days, was actually the scene where I make him do the lines and it happens on his hand. That touched into something that you think, gosh, we're all capable of great cruelty. Because you know, deep down, you deserve to be punished. Brr, all that pink with those kitten images on the dishes just make this sequence even more horrible. According to the official Harry Potter film Twitter feed, there were more than 40 kittens brought to a photo shoot to create that iconic weird look for Dolores Umbridge's cabinet. The only thing that made it easier for Staunton to work on the wildest scene in the Order of Phoenix was the fact that she already knew Radcliffe long before they met on the Harry Potter set. Yes, they previously met on BBC's David Copperfield. Luckily, they had such a high level of mutual support that this helped helped give Staunton the courage to dive into the madness of Umbridge's character. You must know that. Agreed. Enough about Umbridge. Let's talk about someone nicer. Voldemort, for example. Not many Harry Potter fans know just how deeply Ray Fiennes got into character. I wanted him to be really as scary as it could be. Fiennes knew that he succeeded way before he first appeared on screen. He recalled a moment from set when he walked past the child of a script supervisor wearing a little of Voldemort's makeup. And I just looked and this little boy burst into tears. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's an awesome achievement. Although the true magic of acting transformation only really happened while he was filming The Deathly Hollows Part 2. The scene where the Dark Lord enters Hogwarts with his devilish monologue was mostly improvised by the actor. Harry Potter is dead! <laughs> <laughs> and now is the time to declare yourself. According to Jason Isaacs, what Fine said in that scene was always a big surprise for everyone on set. We shot it for weeks and you never quite knew who he was going to turn on, what he was going to say, even. Well, I must say, I'd hoped for better. <laughs> Another example of Fine's improvisation in this scene was that hug. Yes, nobody, not even Tom Felton, knew that Fine's was going to hug him. That wasn't in the script, Felton recalled. We did that take like 25 times. He only hugged me once. It was like a one-off thing that he just threw at me. And I'm standing there going, what the hell is he doing? I guess that Ray Fiennes was just born to play the Dark Lord. <laughs> Talking about brilliant improvisation, we can't get over the Malfoy's unscripted moments. That's right, both Jason Isaacs and Tom Felton invented some cool lines on set. While filming this scene from the Chamber of Secrets, Isaacs was supposed to leave Dumbledore's office without saying anything. But he didn't feel like his character could stop himself from a parting jab. <laughs> Let us hope that Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. Like father, like son. Tom Felton also had his moment of spontaneous genius during Chamber of Secrets. Why are you wearing glasses? Uh, um, reading. Reading? Mm -hmm. I didn't know you could read. Such a nice touch for such a young actor. During Isaacs and Felton's very first mutual scene, something shocking happened. Remember how Lucius Malfoy was introduced in the movie? Don't touch anything, Draco. Yes, father. Unfortunately, during the first couple of takes, Isaacs didn't know that his cane had two sharp little fangs. So yeah, Isaac hit the poor kid and this happened. And I went, don't touch Draco, and the fangs went right into his skin. Oh, and he looked at this angelic little boy, oh. wide eyes, filled with tears, and he finished the scene, and I went, Tom, I'm so sorry. He went, no, it's all right, it was good for the scene, it was great. But kudos to the young actor. Even though he was in horrible pain, he stayed in character. Well done. The funny thing is that Felton always thought Isaacs did that on purpose to get the best out of his acting. He's, he's still my friend 15 years later. He still doesn't believe I didn't do it on purpose. So. But enough about the bad guys. Let's talk about the character who was always in the mood to fight against the Dark Lord's forces. Now the minister says you're too young to see what these curses do. I say different. You need to know what they're up against. You need to be prepared. 
You need to find another place to put your chewing gum besides the underside of your desk, Mr. Finnegan! Or at least to fight against lazy students. I don't know about you guys, but for us, Alistair Moody is one of the most spectacular supporting characters in the whole series. And mostly because of his mad eye, of course. Do you know how it was made? It was all practical. His eye was a real mechanical prop, radio controlled by the special effects department. And the crew had up to seven different looks for Moody's eye. The actor, Brendan Gleeson, was always there to try on all the looks, and advising which would work best for his acting. We wanted something he actually made as a wizard, Gleeson recalled, before the CGI just about took over in number four, particularly, which is my big one. But we kept the eye in camera. That's sort of magic. That's real magic in cinema. If you were curious, this is how Moody looks like without his mad eye. Not that creepy, right? Anyway, the final result looks fantastic on screen. Gleason loves to recall that his four kids were very proud of him for playing Moody. They all roared when they heard. Dad's going to be Mad-Eye Moody! Why? The cool thing is that one of his sons also got a chance to star in Harry Potter. Yes, it was Domhnall Gleeson who played Bill Weasley. Now that you know that, I bet re-watching Harry Potter will never be the same. Most of the Harry Potter characters were scared of Mad-Eye Moody, but there was one particular student who was afraid of almost every Hogwarts teacher. You know who we're talking about, right? Neville Longbottom. <laughs> The curious thing about Matthew Lewis is that, just like his character, he was also a pretty timorous kid, afraid of the older actors, and especially of Alan Rickman. Never. what frightens you most of all? Professor Sorry? Professor Snape. Just recently on the Inside of You podcast, Matthew Lewis shared how he overcame his fear of Mr. Rickman. It happened on the legendary actor's very last day of filming. On, on his last day, I went to his trailer and even knocking on his door, Terrifying. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to work with you for 10 years and not ever shouting at me or, or you know, treating any of us anything less than your equal. To Matthew's surprise, Mr. Rickman was way kinder than he realized during all those years. Rickman simply replied, come on in. Then he put the kettle on and had a cup of tea with Matthew and chatted about the young actor's future career plans. Mr. Rickman saw how uncertain Matthew was regarding acting, and he decided to say one thing that melted Matthew's heart. But he was, no, he did say, you can do it. He said that to me, those are his words, as you know, you... You can do it. What a nice behind the scenes story, huh? Seems like if you want to say thank you to anyone, there's no need to wait for eight years to do so. Most of the time, people are not as scary as you think they are. Unlike Matthew Lewis, who was uncertain about himself, Ivana Lynch was always sure that she would become an actress. More so, that she'd play Luna Lovegood. Here's what Ivana said in her audition. I know I, I'm going to play this character the best. I know her the best. And I was like, if you don't pick me, that's okay, that's your choice, but you're gonna be wrong. Well, that's pretty daring. Ivana Lynch went even further than that. She was brave enough to propose and implement so many things regarding her character. Here are some nice examples for you. Remember Luna and her father's weird dance? Most probably, you never thought of it, but someone invented those quirky moves. And that was Ivana. She also collaborated with award-winning costume designer Jani Tamim, designing Luna's radish-shaped earrings. Those baubles have become super popular, and you can even buy a handmade copy over the internet now. It was an excellent collaboration, Tamim said. She was a very clever kid to work with. There were also rumors that the look of Luna's room in the Deathly Hollows was inspired by Ivana's personal art. Yes, the talented actress also likes to draw draw. Pretty nice words, right? The hearsay about Luna's room was never confirmed or denied by anyone from the Harry Potter crew, which gives us hope that there's always more to discover about the wizarding world. Are you a fan of Harry Potter? Then don't miss these videos. Thanks for watching, folks, and stay awesome!